And welcome. Hi there. And you are Nooner with me. Dave Lamont is underway. It's one man band today. And this will be the only Nooner uh, for this week. Just a quick reminder. Two quick reminders. You hear animal noises. I'm home by myself. I've got no help with the animals. At any moment, a cat could wander right on top of my laptop. You hear my dog Riley barking. Um, that probably means that they're getting a little rowdy in there. It seemed like last time I did this show, the dogs and cats decided they were going to play. So if it happens again, I can't stop it. Uh, the other reminder is that while I'm at Dania Highlight this month, working on Friday afternoons, I won't be able to do a nooner for you on Fridays. Yeah, just you should actually see this if it's possible. This is actually funny. I don't know if I can do this. No, looks like not. It was dogs and cats face to face, nose to nose. Thank you, dear. And uh, not anymore. They broke up. So we'll try to keep them under control. Anyway, I'm at Dania High Lie announcing again. Uh, did that in the, <laughs> throughout almost the entire 1980s. And although things are drastically different in the world of High Lie, I'm happy to be with my friend Big Dave Lemon all this month. So Friday, their matinees at 1 o'clock all month long. So I won't be doing nooners uh, on Fridays during the month of May. Um, I could sit here <clears throat> and just reanalyze the draft for you, but if you're a real draft fan, you've gone through about 17 websites and you've watched the NFL Network and ESPN and anybody else who has anything to say, your, your local radio shows, your favorite talk show people, the national people. Um, so I don't know if there's much of a need for me to regurgitate a lot of many of the same thoughts because I kind of like the, what the Dolphins did. I kind of, I think they've, you know, once again, they've gone all in on Tua. So if he pans out, the team ought to be pretty good. And if he doesn't, then you can figure out the rest for yourself. Uh, I No problem with the first pick. No problem with the first round at all. Uh, really, I think, you know, I'm, I'm kind of with the analysts. They were solid. And it seemed like most teams were solid. What the Bears did looked like it was really solid, uh, getting Justin Fields. You know, a lot of teams drafted, for the most part, well. And there were your usual reaches. Like, listen, I love Najee Harris and Travis Etienne as much as anybody. But I thought picking them 24 and 25 was a little heavy-handed. And I think the Jacksonville went, oh, God, we better get Etienne before he goes off the board because those guys were projected second-rounders. But I'm nitpicking. It just comes down to can they stay healthy, the early round picks, okay? That's always – you know, that just throws everything in the garbage, all right? UM fans – and somebody pointed this out on Twitter. UM fans from the, what, 90s. Remember, you teal green, physically gifted wide receiver, big body. Guy had hops. He had hands. He had everything. And then he he's drafted by the Dolphins, and he wrecks his knees, and he never really does anything, and he can't. So this promising career like that, that's what's so cruel about the NFL and all sports, but it seems like the NFL is worse. Uh, so I'm not going to bore you to death with analysis, but I am going to bore you to death with my new favorite team, the Green Bay Packers. You may ask why, and let me tell you a little story. And uh, first off, let's, let's talk about Aaron Rodgers and his situation. Because this is the story of the draft in many ways. The Packers say they want to keep him. <laughs> yeah. And they don't really have a plan in place since they screwed up last year's draft with Jordan Love, who never got into a game. And when it came down to the end of the season, the playoffs wasn't even the backup quarterback. He was the clipboard guy. What? Now, maybe one day this pick pays off, but not in the immediate future for this team. So it really bothers Aaron Rodgers, who is obviously a guy who might be considered a little different. Reading an article today, dude has not spoken to his family in seven years. A few years ago, they sent him Christmas gifts. He reportedly sent them back. Okay? He has gone through a string of high-profile relationships with uh, actresses and then Danica Patrick. Now he's engaged to an actress. He has the Jeopardy thing going where people really like this performance and he wants the job. He wants to be the next Trebek. And at his age, late 30s, that's not a bad career choice if the producers are okay with it. But at the same time, he wants to be Brady-esque and play into his 40s. 
But the front office didn't do for him what Tampa Bay's front office did for Brady, which was help build a Super Bowl contender and go, okay, sport, you think you're good enough. We think you're good enough. Now go win us the Super Bowl, and you see what happened. And who do they beat along the way? Green Bay. And then you come to find out that the screw-up about kicking a field goal at the end of the game when they give the ball back to Tampa never to get it again in the playoffs, Aaron Rodgers didn't know that was coming. He called the third down play thinking, I got two here, so let me do this. And if it doesn't work, then I'll go with a you know something else on fourth down. Didn't happen. So he's mad about that. I don't know whether he's going to leverage his Aaron Rodgers-ness into getting out of there. It's an interesting world because for the most part in the world, we labor types, I've never been management, obviously not an owner, don't normally have leverage, right? I don't. I just can't go walking into my bosses and start demanding things or I'm going to leave somewhere else because they're going to suggest that I leave and go somewhere else. You probably can't do that either. Most of you, unless maybe you run your own businesses or you're a higher up in management. Yet we are a labor-hating country. <laughs> we hate ourselves. There's so many people who are anti-labor. It's unbelievable. Who are laborers? Weird. Not to get political, but weird. So a lot of people resent it when an athlete has leverage. Now, before the crap hit the fan on Deshaun Watson, he was trying to leverage himself out of Houston. Guys have leveraged themselves out of positions before. In the NFL, you have the famous John Elway and then Eli Manning bits of leverage. Elway didn't want to go to Baltimore and play for the Ursay family. Good move, John. And he had the Yankees as leverage. Eli Manning just made it flat out. I won't play in San Diego. And he got, you know, they drafted him and then traded him to New York where they won two Super Bowls with him. And he's a borderline Hall of Fame player. So the leverage thing is fascinating to me. Aaron Rodgers, to me, has leverage. I'm sure the debate in Wisconsin is, you know, we love him, we love him, we love him, we don't want him to go, or we hate him because he wants to leave the Packers, even though he says how much he loves Green Bay. The future of the Packers is at stake, certainly the immediate future. It's going to be hard if you trade him to get value real hard. And then there was another rumor today. First, the big rumor that broke over the weekend is he's going to go to Denver. Well, that didn't happen. I suppose it's still good. And now there's a story that's probably been planted by Rodgers and his agents about his interest in the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. I suppose you could work out a David Carr swap in there, right, and send him over. But I always get those two mixed up, by the way. I may have screwed that up is the Carr brothers. But anyway, he has leverage. He has, as they said in Seinfeld, hand. I've got hand, Jerry. I've got hand. You know how that worked out for George. So it's a fascinating story. And I really care about it now because of the following. If you know me well enough, you know that a member of our family is a young man named uh, to Daryl T.J. Slayton who lived with us throughout his high school years when he was going to American Heritage High School where I do some work and my sons went there and believe me, it's a private school and uh, if I didn't work there and they didn't get partial scholarships, they wouldn't have gone there, but it's a wonderful place. I'm very fond of it. And TJ went there. He was already close with our younger son, Drew, and he still is, close with our dog, and um, is a part of our family, very much a part of our family. And so we followed his career at the University of Florida with great interest. I'd try to get up to a game a year, sometimes even two. And uh, we've stayed in touch with him. He comes down. We, we always see him at Christmas time. So, you know, we are close. So we had a little gathering on Friday night, the second night of the draft, because there was a rumor that he was going to go in the third round. And his agent was there. It was a small party. Uh, a couple of family members, a lot of people from his girlfriend's family uh, up in Palm Beach Gardens. And if you don't know where that is, that's uh, a little bit north, uh, right around the West Palm Beach area, a little bit around in there. Uh, north of Palm Beach Airport, like one or two exits where we were. Have you ever flown into PBI? 
Well, he didn't get drafted in the third round, but that was okay. It wasn't like a crushing, deflating experience. At least I don't think it was. Because most of the mock drafts and most of the experts had him going on the third day, rounds four to seven. And there was a wide – he is a nose tackle. He is a big man, okay? He's about 6'5 and 330-ish. Uh, but he's as nice as he is large. So that's the good news. So – there's another party that his mom is throwing with a bunch of other people. Well, I'm working and uh, my son Drew goes to the party and I'm sitting there at high lie and I got my phone and I was like 0.5 and I look at the draft. Nope, not drafted yet. All right, here's the yellow shirt. Suppose, you know, that kind of thing. Probably not as focused as I should have been that afternoon. And finally I'm sitting there. I am announcing a game. And I'm kind of leaning a little bit. My phone is in front of me, and it starts to move. And here it comes. Packers, way to go. Yeah, da, da, da. And, and, and our son Drew's like, watch now. Well, we don't have the draft on in the announcers, but we did later. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Um, you know, my wife is dead. So everybody, now it's obvious he's been drafted by the Green Bay Packers in the fifth round. And we'll see what happens from there. But here's the interesting story. Uh, my son tells me later how it went down. Uh, you know, it's look, it, we're in South Florida, for those of you who aren't, and it's hot as hell here. All right. It was pushing 90s over the weekend. Now, the, fortunately, our infamous humidity has yet to arrive, but it will. So, but it's still brutally hot. So, at one point, he, my son, uh, his girlfriend, TJ's girlfriend, and another friend of theirs went into a car to get air conditioning. It's the only place they could get it. So the story goes, excuse me, the story goes that uh, TJ is talking about, well, what happens if I don't get drafted? Maybe I can become an undrafted free agent. You know, in other words, he's not upset. I'm sure he's disappointed, but he's not, you know, like in a rage over this. And he's talking about that and everyone's going, yeah. And the phone rings, his phone. And he looks at it and goes, Green Bay? Green Bay? And Drew goes, hey. They're on the clock. And sure enough, that's how it happened. And then he got out of the car and spoke on the phone for quite a while and before they nailed everything down. The reason he was surprised at Green Bay is it wasn't one of the teams that would have been rumored to be interested in him. The first rumor was Pittsburgh, and they might get him early. We knew Chicago was interested because his first college defensive line coach is now at, with the Bears, Rumpf. And then we heard the Saints might be interested. Cincinnati was supposedly interested. Dallas, ooh, that would have been bad, uh, supposedly interested or was supposedly interested. So when it came up Green Bay, I think it briefly confused him. So that's why we are now Packer backers. I already know where all the Packer bars are in Broward County. And uh, undoubtedly, if uh, you'll be seeing me there, assuming he makes the team. And you're going, Dave, hey, of course he'll make the team. He probably will. He'd be a backup. Packers have a stud at the nose tackle position who was gracious enough to call TJ, by the way, and welcome him to the team. Apparently the guy sounds like Barry White, the late Barry White. But let me tell you what the odds are here because this I found this and I knew this was uh, difficult. So let me just give you some odds of sports becoming a professional, all right? In men's basketball, Less than 3% actually play high school and go into the NCAA to play. Less than 3%. 1.3% of seniors are drafted by an NBA team. The percentage of high school seniors who will eventually get drafted by the NBA team is 3 in 10,000. That's 0.03%. These are numbers and the NCAA have, has provided. That's the chance of getting four of a kind in the first round of draw poker. Okay, 0.3%. For the women, high school seniors who go on to play in the NCAA, 3%. Drafted by a WNBA team, 1%. 0.02% go from high school to the WNBA. In other words, high school players who eventually get drafted, 0.02%. In baseball, high school seniors who go on to play in the NCAA men's baseball, 5.6%. Now, this is a little different because some high schoolers are drafted directly out of high school. NCAA seniors drafted by a Major League Baseball team, 10.5%. High school seniors who eventually get into Major League Baseball, 
half a percent, about one in 200. And on and on we go. Football, you ask. Well, here's where the odds of facing TJ. High school senior who went on to play in the NCAA, well, he got a scholarship to the University of Florida, 5.8%. NCAA seniors drafted by an NFL team, 2%. Okay, about 1 in 50. High school seniors eventually drafted by an NFL team, 0.09%. That is about the same chance as you having an IQ above 150. The average IQ of a PhD student is 130. These are the odds that these young men, and in some cases women, beat to go from high school to the pros. Now, I left out a couple of other sports, but the point is it's astronomically difficult. Just the math alone says it. So TJ and all the young men who were drafted over this weekend, even the ones that you know, were obviously going to be locked in and high draft picks and make you know good signing bonuses, uh, they have really crushed the odds here. And if you're wondering why sometimes athletes get paid what they get paid, it is because they are not a part of a large employment pool. Okay? They're not. And that's why athletes get paid. Plus, there's money. Lots of it. Tons of money sitting around there in the pros. Name me the last owner in pro sports to go bankrupt in the, in the major sports, in the NFL. Exactly. And by the way, you're not paying those salaries with your tickets. That era is long over. Those TV contracts cover that. So naturally, we are Packer fans. We were overjoyed for TJ. He faces, of course, an uphill battle being a fifth-round pick, but I think he'll make it. Of course, I'm completely prejudiced. And for our family, it is very, very exciting. And for everybody who knows him, it's very, very, very exciting. So, yeah, I'm going to be into the green and gold now uh, for as long as he's involved with the, uh, the Green Bay Packers organization. And by the way, what a cool place to play. I know it's also a cold place to play, but what a cool place to play. The history of it all. And it so happened, I was doing a women's bowling event. Gosh, that would be like five or six years ago. And I took a tour of Lambeau Field, Lambeau Stadium. And now, you know, I remember it in the 60s when it basically looked like just a, you know, an oval with seats. And it's not that now. It's massive. And it's beautiful. And it's a palace for the NFL to play in. So, uh, I'm looking forward now. Whether the Packers are going to be any good, may not. He may have nothing to do with that. It's the Aaron Rodgers thing that's hanging over all of this. And uh, you know, uh, now I'm rooting for Rodgers to stay in Green Bay. Before I really didn't have an opinion, but I would love him to stay. Uh, get a couple, two or three more good years out of him. Uh, but yeah, it was. It's a fascinating process. Uh, now that negotiations won't take terribly long, I'm sure he'll be signing fairly quickly. And then um, we'll see what happens with these mini camps and uh, because some guys are opting out of voluntary workouts and mini camps, not training camp, which is in July. But this is a hell of a story. Uh, and, you know, you think about the odds, uh, the impossible odds that these guys go through to make it. And uh, it, it, it really opens your eyes up as to how difficult it is to become a professional athlete. It seems, you know, you think, well, anybody can do that. No, you can't. I can't, you can't, very few people, as you now see, can. not It's one thing to go from the high school hero with the cheerleader uh, girlfriend, uh, captain of the cheerleader girlfriend, and the letter jacket. It's another to go to a guy who's getting paid. And even the bridge in between is difficult to do, to get the college scholarship to play, at, you know, even if you don't play much, just to get the scholarship is an unbelievably difficult thing to do. So it's... Uh, something we are celebrating for sure and something that we are very proud of. And I know everybody around TJ uh, are uh, extremely proud and should be. And I hope he is too. Probably a little bit stressful because apparently after, you know, once he gets drafted, you think, okay, party. No, no, no. Phone calls coming left and right from Wisconsin, man, left and right. All sorts of things. He had to film a short video uh, for the Packers website, you know, sort of introducing himself to the Green Bay fans. It's on Twitter. If you want to see it, I retweeted it. And I could use some Twitter followers, too, by the way, at Dave Lamont one You see it's right there on the screen. 
it doesn't cost anything. Same to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All that's free. So help a guy out, would you? All right, that's it for today. Next week, I'm going to see if I can. I've got an idea for next week for Monday show. Again, if you want, there is no admission to come into Dania Highline. And there are performances this week, Wednesday at 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock, Thursday night, 7 o'clock, Friday and Saturday at 1 and 7, and then Sunday at 4. I know the game pretty well, and the play there is very good. And so I think you'd have a you get a, cook, a good kick out of it. And there's a casino right behind one of the walls. Not the one they're playing on, obviously, but where the spectators sit. So if you want to dabble into a little casino gambling and come on in to check out Highlight, uh, not tonight or tomorrow, but any other time after that this week, I highly recommend it. I'm very snobbish about my Highlight, and uh, I'm impressed with the, with the players they have there right now. They're good. So I hope you drop by. I'd love to see you. Uh, I'll be, you you'll be able to hear me. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, by the way, those of you wishing me a happy birthday today. I really appreciate that. It is so kind. I, I try to respond to everybody. If I miss you, please don't take it personally. Uh, but thank you very, very much for all of that and for all of your kindness and for supporting the show. That'll do it for today. I'm Dave Lamont. You've had your nooner with me. I'll see you in a week. Go Pack Go!